Hey guys, Donny here again. This time I'm going to explain how the mutaplasmids work. Uh, mutaplasmoids are sort of weird mod weird modifiers that take an existing module and a mutaplasmoid and combine them into a new abyssal module which has uh, unique, unique, unique properties. It can't be repackaged, you'd have to sell it on contracts. Uh, essentially what a mutaplasmoid does, uh, if I show info on this Gravid, uh, Tenemen, uh, Afterburner. You can see what afterburners you can put in here, and it, it is literally every tenement afterburner in the game, including storyline, faction, and dead space, as well as just regular tech one. If you go on the attributes tab, you can see uh, mutations, and this is something that could happen to it. So the activation cost can increase by 30%, or it could decrease by 20%. And each of the each of these is about as likely as each other. So uh, you could say here that there, there are fifty one possible outcomes. Uh, it could it could be uh, increased by thirty percent, twenty nine percent, twenty eight percent, twenty seven percent, and so on, as well as neutral. That that's why there are fifty one different possible outcomes. So you you could say here that you have a. Uh, you have like a, about a a sixty percent chance for something bad to happen. Uh, and about a 40% chance that something positive or, or neutral is going to happen. And for the CPU, uh, you could say that there are 46 outcomes, and uh, out of those 46 outcomes, 30 of them are negative. So almost uh, two-thirds of the time, you can expect uh, a, a, something bad to happen to the CPU when using this. Uh, again, same for maximum velocity bonus, although this time it's more likely to increase than decrease. It, it could only decrease by five percent, but there are but there are fifteen possible uh, benefit outcomes. Uh, same for the power grid usage. Uh, this, the best way to use this is probably just to use this. So I've got a I've got three of these gravid tenement afterburners. Uh, if you right click and and use it. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering where these come from, they'll come from uh, the new abyssal uh, PVE content. In fact, there there are uh, there are uh, different variations of of this module. Uh, before I use it, I'll just show it off quickly to you. So uh, I also have this unstable tenement afterburner. There's also a, a decayed. Uh, decayed is the weakest variation. Gravid is the second. It's sort of like the middle, and unstable is the wildest possible. So you can you can see here if we compare decayed, uh, it, it can only go positive ten percent speed, whereas gravid could go fifteen percent. And uh, unstable could possibly be 20% boost, so it's more powerful than gravid, but the penalty is significantly higher. So unstable uh, has the chances to have the best possible modules, but it also has by far the worst penalties. Uh, gravid is sort of uh, in the middle, and then decayed is just a bit weaker than gravid in general. Is is how these sort of mutaplasmoids stack up with each other. So if I use uh, this. Gravid Tenement Afterburner. Again, you can see what can happen uh, on the screen here. And if I plug in this Tenement Afterburner 2, you can see here it would also uh, specifically uh, tell you uh, what is the worst possible outcome for this Afterburner. So it could be 117 activation cost, or it could go down as low as 72. Of course, it will be randomized between these two values. Uh, same for the CPU, for the maximum velocity bonus, and for the power grid usage. If we click mutate here, we'll create an abyssal module, and it'll show you uh, with the red graphs here uh, what happened to it. So in this particular case, uh, the activation cost increased. Uh, the CPU did go down. Uh, we almost saved two CPU off of it. Uh, the maximum velocity bonus <laughs> went down, which is actually a pretty bad roll. And the power grid usage went up, so this is probably worse than a than a, a normal uh, normal tenement module. And we could keep mutating if we wanted to. We could click on a few of these. Let's just show info on the one that we created here. One cool thing as well is uh, it'll tell you what uh, on the top here. It'll tell you uh, uh, what mutaplasmoid was used, uh, what module was put into it, so you can see when someone bricks that officer module. And super, super cool, uh, industrials have kind of been asking for this for a long time, but it, they they, there's a created by tab here. So you can see that I made this this afterburner. So if you looted this, you could laugh at how bad it is, and it was made by me. 
You can one cool thing as well is if you mouse over the different stats, if you end up looting uh, an abyssal module or you get it in some way, uh, the the bar will be showed on the tooltip. So like if obviously not everyone knows all of the stats off by heart and uh, or like how terrible it is. Of course, it will be shown in green too if it's po positive, and you can just mouse over and see. Uh, how bad each roll is so if someone's trying to sell you like a, a you're trying to buy like a super powerful afterburner you, you can just uh, like mouse over it on contracts to see like how good it is in rel like uh, out of the m maximum possible rolls also once you have this uh, th there's nothing you can do with it aside from trash it try to sell it on contracts you, you can reprocess it and it'll give you the uh, the, the base materials for it uh, obviously, a, a a Tech 2 Afterburner is worth a lot more than a normal 10MN Afterburner. So, uh, we're not going to get the Tech 2 materials back from the from the Abyssal Afterburner, even though we put a Tech 2 uh, uh, Afterburner in, into it. So, you, you won't get much. So, basically, you'll have to sell it, trash it, and since this is really weak, as well as uh, when you mouse over it, not just on the stats, if you just mouse over it when it's in your hangar here, you can see what happened to it as well. So it's a really quick way to sort of see if it's good or it's bad or not. Since this is pretty bad, let's just get rid of this one and we'll make a few more of these afterburners with our uh, Gravid Tenement afterburner, just to sort of give you an idea of how this works. So our second one uh, has uh, is also really, really terrible. <laughs> Uh, I guess we're gonna have to trash that. We'll we'll throw in another one. Ooh, so we got a really powerful speed boost there. That would be pretty nice on the Phantasm, but it it does have a, a small cap penalty, a small power grid penalty, and a small CPU penalty. But I think you could work around that. I think this would be a very good uh, afterburner. All, all the stats, of course, roll independently. And, and if we just use this unstable one here, which is the super wild one that. It's probably going to end up much worse, but it could end up much more powerful. You can see what happened. We've got a very small speed boost. Very decent power grid uh, decrease. Like five less power grid is pretty nice. And an activation cost. So this one ended up being pretty positive overall. So that's kind of how it works. Uh, in case you're wondering uh, what you can mutate right now, what's going to be on the patch. Uh, so that there, there'll be... Uh, there's, there'll be one for large ancillary. Uh, this is called abnormal, but it's basically the same as a gravid kind of. Uh, so for the ancillary armor reps and for the uh, ancillary shield reps too, uh, you can get a duration to. You can get an activation duration. Obviously, having less duration is better because it cycles faster, which means you rep more HP per second. Uh, you can increase the armor hit points. Uh, you can decrease the CPU cost, although it's more likely to increase. You can decrease the power grid usage, but it, but again, it's more likely to increase when you use this because it's weighted more heavily towards the red number. Uh, the reload time uh, can also go down too, which is really interesting on ancillary uh, boosters. Uh, with a thirty percent reload time reduction, you'd get a I think you'd get a a forty two second reload instead of sixty seconds, which could be pretty pretty nice. And of course, the, the you can also get the cap to go down on it too, or it could increase. So there's armor plates and armor repairers under armor. For shields, it's the same thing. You've got, you've got shield boosters as well as shield extenders. Uh, there's a stasis webifier ones. Uh, what's really interesting actually on the unstable one, you can see is that the, uh, they have a maximum velocity bonus. Now, if you've got the full 10%, you could get a 66% web, but on a Serpentis ship, that would be a 99% web. Uh, it's also worth mentioning on on these uh, on the tackle mods. There's uh, also warp disruptors and warp scramblers. O although uh, warp scramblers appear under the warp disruption uh, tab, they have a very high chance of uh, having an activation cost penalty, and that could be really bad, especially on frigates. Uh, so looking at the Warp Disruptor ones, you can see here even on the worst one here, the Decayed one, it's always going to increase the activation cost. And you you can go from a 5% optimal penalty to an 8% bonus. On the best one possible, on the Disruptor, it could be a 20% bonus to range, but it is most likely going to kill the cap on it. And a lot of people were like circle jerking on Reddit about how uh, Stilettos and Gammas are going to be 
super powerful with this, but I think the activation cost or the, the just the CPU penalty is gonna break it, break them, and you have to get a, a pretty good roll in optimal range and neutral, ideally on the CPU and activation cost for it to be good, which is pretty unlikely. Uh, if you were to like uh, add up all the values here, there's 161 possible outcomes on the activation cost alone. And only 10 of them are positive and one of them is neutral. So if you put like 16 warp disruptors into this, only one of them is not going to have a bad cap penalty on it. Uh, and maybe like two of them will have like workable cap penalties. So you're going to have to use up a lot of modules to get the best kind of stuff. Like the, the, the chance that you would get like uh, the best possible optimal range CPU and activation cost on this is like one out of... It's like 161 multiplied by 71 multiplied by 41. Uh, just, to, just to give you like the, the, the numbers on that. 161 multiplied by 71 multiplied by uh, 41. Uh, the chance of making the absolute perfect warp disruptor with this uh, would be 1 out of uh, 468,671. <laughs> so they are going to be super rare. Uh, especially if you end up getting a, a terrible roll on them. Uh, there also are some energy neutralizer. What? Well, there's also an energy neutralizer one, and of course the afterburner and um, micro warp drives that I already showed off. Uh, and, and just for the hell of it, let's just use this uh, Core X Type 500 MN because I happen to have it in the hangar, just to see how badly this ends up going. Yep. Luckily, this is not the live server, right? Otherwise, this would have been a uh, a completely bricked 500 <laughs> dead space micro warp drive because it's now worse than Tech One. But that's kind of how the the muta plasmoids work. The I believe the decayed ones, the weakest ones, will drop from the lower tiers, like Tier One, Tier Two. Uh, the the gravid ones will drop from Tier Three ish, and the uh, unstable. Unstable meter plasmoids will drop from tier 4 and tier 5, which are the, the highest difficulty sites. So uh, I look forward to seeing uh, people trashing officer modules. Of course, if you want to sell one of these, uh, you'd have to... Uh, you can see here that I used the dead space on this and it got absolutely bricked too. And you can see that it was me who lost ISK on it. But, but to sell these, you're going to have to sell them on contracts. Which is going to be slightly annoying, but also kind of cool because it's going to mean like traditional trading might come back with these. Uh, I, I know that there's a lot of people who kind of don't like RNG modules in a way, but I, I think they're pretty cool because it's going to act as a huge module sink. And if you look at Tranquility right now, uh, a lot of the Mutoplasmoid, uh, Faction and Dead Space potential modules have actually increased in price a lot. So I think Mutoplasmoids are going to make DED site and, and faction loot worth a lot more, especially like low, lower tier cheap faction stuff has gone up a lot. Like m most webs now have gone up by like 20, 30 mil, for example, due to market speculation. So, and this is, these, these are just going to act as like huge uh, module sinks, which is really cool. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this sort of explains how these mutoplasmoids work, or mutoplasmids, I guess, how they work, and uh, hopefully your role estimals uh, large shield booster or nobles.